What's going on you guys? I know it's been a while since I made a video, uh, but I got the Mini in the garage now that it's finally clean again. And I figured I'd shoot something uh, since I don't have to stand out in the freezing cold. So what I think I'm going to do today is uh, basically like a mod review. We'll go over all the mods that I've done, uh, mostly power-wise to the car. And uh, I'll give you my impression of them, how much they cost, uh, if I would recommend buying it, and just a generalized review of how I think they work. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump into it. Alright, so I figured we'd start right here in the engine bay, which uh, most of your money's going to go, if, especially if you're looking for power, obviously. Um, so one of the most obvious modifications that I've made that stands out is probably the intake. Uh, that's a CTS turbo intake. Uh, it costs approximately $280 or so. I got it off of ECS tuning. Um, I believe it might have been on sale then though. I want to say they go right around $320, maybe just over $300 uh, normally. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about this intake. Uh, so when you get your intake, it has absolutely no instructions, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but for most people, you know, if you have general automotive knowledge, an intake is like one of the first and simplest mods that most people do anyways. Um, it was actually, I think, the last modification I did. Most people will agree, and I might also agree with it as well a little bit, that the stock intake is perfectly fine for these cars. Um, at most, I would add like a AFE or an Alta uh, foam filter, a dry foam, or maybe a uh, the AFE dry panel filter or something like that. Um, so the air usually feeds in from the tube right here, comes up, travels along here, meets the bottom of the air box, goes through the filter, and then would come into the turbo, which compresses the air and sends it out uh, to the intercooler and so on to the throttle body. Now. This is what frustrated me the most about this intake. I'm assuming that it has something to do with Euro cars, but there's gonna be like a little notch right here that has threading in it that you would assume is supposed to bolt into that right there, just like this one does over here. It doesn't. It doesn't line up. I'm assuming that's maybe a Euro car thing, because I know the Euro cars, uh, most of them don't have um, a mass airflow sensor so maybe the airbox is longer or shorter I honestly don't know it actually does come with a piece in the kit that if you don't have a mass airflow sensor so if you're overseas um, it actually makes room uh, just like the, the uh, mass sensor would here so you don't have to worry about it it's included in the kit so it'll fit either car um, the other thing that I didn't understand was so with this intake you normally this hose right here on this car with a stock intake there's a nipple on this side of it i had the intake that has the hard pipe um, not the really flexible one with all the ribs around it uh, mine was more like the jcw style um, so that normally goes into a nipple on this side of the intake and it has a sensor actually attached to it um, and that sensor plug is right here which right now has this resistor in it now this is the part that confused me also over here coming off of your PCB um, is this hose and there was a sensor that plugged in with this hose as well they only gave you one resistor in the box <laughs> and on top of that the resistor was just a plain resistor like there was nothing special about it. Like you can see this one a little bit better. See how this one, I have you know the shrink wrapping up here, um, shrink wrapping down here and so on. Um, it had none of that. So trying to figure out how to plug it into this sensor and make it stay there, make it work was like, what the hell am I supposed to do? And then on top of that, what about the other sensor? You know? So, cause these will throw a check engine light and I don't know about y'all, but I hate staring at a check engine light. So what I did was, I went to uh, NM Engineering, is it NM Engineering? I believe it's NM Engineering. Uh, they make an intake very similar to this one, 
Um, the only difference really is up here in the filter area, their design is a lot different. Um, it doesn't have these enclosures like this, it's more just open. Um, but their intake deletes these sensors as well. Um, so these uh, resistor harnesses right here, I just called them up and I was like, hey, I'm looking for the resistor harnesses for uh, when you install a cold air intake. And the lady said I could purchase them separately. I think they were like $25 for both. Um, so pretty inexpensive, especially for how clean they are and they work, obviously, and it's not gonna go anywhere. So what they do is they send you the resistor, which is this skinny part up here, and it comes down and it'll plug right in. I mean, it has the exact same uh, female uh, plug down here to go into this plug, I believe. And then they give you an extra piece of heat shrink that you slide over and then you can heat it up and it actually grabs on there so you know it's not going anywhere and it's warm. So and then I just took those and I tucked them away in little areas that they weren't going to interfere with anything or get a lot of heat. Um, the intake in itself is great. I mean if you're looking for blow-off valve sound, you're going to get it. You're going to get um, the diverter valve. Uh, since it's not being muffled by the intake system, you're going to get a lot more sound from that. Um, Personally, I ran one of those little spacer plates for the, the blow-off valve sound on the diverter valve for a little bit, and I didn't like it. It was a little too loud, a little too ricey, um, and my car didn't seem to like it after a while. It seemed like I was creating less uh, max boost all of a sudden for some reason. Um, so I took that out. It was a torch solution spacer. Um, so the intake itself, overall, it works great. Um, this opening right here, you know, you got a little bit of heat shielding, uh, which is nice. Um, you got fresh air that comes through your intake scoop on your hood, comes down, and will kind of flow over the intake as well. So that's also nice. It's not a closed system like the AEM or anything like that, though. Um, but I mean, it does the job. And honestly, if you have a front mount intercooler, it's really not gonna make a difference in your intake temps. Uh, everybody usually complains that these are hot air intakes. So, the only time you're really getting any little bit of hot air is when you're sitting at idle, to be honest. Once you start moving, the intake temps drop to pretty much the same as a stock air intake would. You're still getting cold air feed from uh, the cold air feed pipe over here. It goes, still goes down there, picks up the air from the front, uh, meets the bottom of the air box, which this is attached to, and then you've got cold air coming up from the top, and then you've got cold air coming in from the hood while you're driving. So it's really not that bad. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, no instructions, so it was a little bit tedious, like I said. Um, other than that, though, I mean, the fitment is great. It looks great. Um, it's definitely a much more freer flowing uh, intake than the stock one is. The piping's bigger. It's a nice pipe, coated, um, got their logos on it. It's a really beautiful intake, and that's really the reason I got it was because it looked good. I wanted an intake that when you know I opened the hood up, it, it, it looks good. It's not too flashy, um, but it definitely looks like it's meant to be in this car, you know what I mean? So that's the intake. Let's go over some other stuff. All right, so I'm down here on the floor holding the camera. The tripod wouldn't go low enough, so don't mind if you get a little bit of shakiness or my hand movements. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about here is the intercooler. So this intercooler right here is actually a eBay intercooler and it's a copy of the Forge intercooler, which the Forge intercooler I believe runs somewhere around the mid 300s, maybe in the 400s. Um, it's a stepped intercooler, meaning that if you've ever seen the stock one, it's like, a, I mean it's a paperweight for one, it's so tiny. But the stock one basically would, like, would just run along the bottom area right here. You can barely even see it. And then it's kind of tucked back a little bit too. So basically what it does is it takes up the stock intercooler's area down here as well. But a few inches back. And then it comes forward and then goes up. So it's kind of like, like an L shape like this sitting that way. Um, it, I think it's, they say it's like... 250 or 300 percent more surface area than a stock intercooler and they're not kidding i mean <laughs> the stock intercooler is pathetic i wish i still had it i might have some pictures of it that i can drop on the video right here 
um, that you guys can see a difference um, between what I installed and the stock intercooler. Um, as far as performance, this thing is incredible. I, sp I spent $130 shipped on eBay and I got it in like three days. Um, it came from a seller I can't remember the name of right now. There's, I mean, there's hundreds of them on eBay. All you have to do is look up the Forge design and look at the copies, um, and you'll find one. And I mean, I paid, yeah, like 130 bucks shipped. It got here in like three days. It took me a little while to install it. It's a pretty uh, tedious install, so I was kind of shying away from it. Uh, you have to take the front bumper off. On my car, there's a uh, extra support beam that some of the, the earlier N14 models uh, don't have, which I think is the 2000, you know, the 2010 and below, or maybe 2011 and below to 07. Um, they don't have that extra support brace in there, I believe. So that support brace got in the way. I take the support brace off, and the support brace didn't want to go back in properly. It took me forever. Um, it took me like four hours, which for me is forever. Um, but once I got it in there. It was a real big accomplishment. I was so glad just to have it done. Got the, the bumper back on. The bumper in itself, that's another mission. Uh, there's quite a few plastic clips everywhere that you have to take off. And there's ones under the bumper as well. All kinds of stuff. Um, and I had so much like built up sand and salt for whatever. Just all types of road grime was up under there. It all fell out when I took the bumper off. So at least it's out. Um, now for performance, for $130, if you complain about the performance of this intercooler, you're out of your mind. I almost <laughs> cussed, but you're, you're out of your mind. All right, so my intake temps with the stock intercooler when I would go to the track, and we're talking like September time frame in New Jersey, um, I think the track at its hottest when I went was maybe like 90 degrees or so, maybe mid 80s. My intake temps, uh, when I was in the pits waiting to go for my next run, they'd be up there at like, oh man, 120, 130, and then they would drop down to like maybe, you know, 100 degrees, 90 degrees, maybe as close, like semi-close to ambient temperature. Once I started moving, and usually not till the point where I was, you know, I was ending my run anyways in the quarter mile, so very useless so with this intercooler um, during a wide open throttle pool I have never seen my intake temps go above 10 maybe 12 uh, degrees above ambient temperature so when I swapped this intercooler on I did data logging compared to uh, the stock one and a bunch of people on North American motoring forum will vouch the same thing with their uh, eBay intercoolers, these things perform great. And I mean, especially for the money, most of these intercoolers for this car, they cost like, you know, anywhere from 400 to $800. And I mean, it's a lot. And yeah, you're paying for the research and the development and stuff. And these eBay guys are kind of ripping them off or whatever. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, I want to save money. So that's what I did. And honestly, I am more than pleased with his performance. I would highly recommend getting an eBay intercooler um, for Mini Coopers. I would highly recommend also going on NorthAmericanMotoring.com, signing up for the forums and reading reviews of other people's uh, experience with eBay intercoolers. You'll see some bad and you'll see a lot of good. Um, some people f have mentioned that the uh, welds have failed on some of them, um, but so far, I mean, I've had this thing on here for six months or so now and not a single issue I mean it doesn't even look like it has any damage on it whatsoever to be honest and it performs great it's still the same uh, polished aluminum color when I bought it and it performs great so I highly recommend that one highly recommend it um, your motors gonna love you for it for the uh, intake temperatures you're gonna make more power consistently um, you will pick up a little bit of actual power, but what counts the most is your power will be way more consistent. The, the heat soak in this thing is almost non-existent. When I go to the track now with this thing, uh, compared to the stock one, um, my intake 
temps would rise maybe 15 degrees above ambient while I'm waiting to do my run. And then by the time I'm moving, I'm already back down to ambient, sometimes a little cooler as the wind is rushing over it. And I get really honestly great results out of it. And I have not had any leaks. I hit 21, uh, a little over 21 PSI with it uh, daily. And I've never had a leak, um, never had a pipe blow off of it or anything like that. It's, it's great. So I would highly recommend it and I suggest you check them out. This is another mod uh, that I did, non-performance mod, but these are Helix uh, halogen projector headlights. Um, I picked them up for, I want to say $200. Um, surprisingly off of walmart.com. It was the cheapest place that I found them. Um, I was looking at them on ECS tuning. I think they were running around 300 on ECS tuning. Um, decided to just throw in a Google search on them and lo and behold, found them at walmart.com from a third party supplier. Um, they are actual Helix brand ones. Um, they got the stamping and everything on them. They came with the bulbs already in them. Um, the high and low beam changes to an H7. So it is not a stock bulb that you would use in your normal non-projector headlights, which are the ones that I had before. Um, so just be in mind of that. If you have aftermarket bulbs that you want to put in there, like if you did a HID kit or LEDs, um, they're not going to fit in here. They're um, H7s. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say about headlights. Um, but coming from, you know, regular reflector headlights, I highly recommend them. Um, you get the nice, clean beam cut off like you would on every other projector uh, headlight. Um, there's actually these little, like, ovals that go around um, the projector lens there, and they actually get a little bit of the light through them, so kind of looks like a cool little LED effect around them, but nothing crazy. Um, I do plan on... Uh, upgrading to LED headlight bulbs myself. I've been looking at XK Clo. They sell a Demon Eye kit, um, which just for the bulbs themselves, if you don't want the uh, Bluetooth controller so you can do the color stuff, which is kind of what I want it for, um, I think they're like 90 bucks for the pair, for a pair of H7s. Um, so I'll get brighter light output, um, more visibility. Uh, and a cleaner look, a higher end look. All right guys, so what I figured we could talk about now was the performance mods that I can't really show you uh, because there's really nothing to be seen or something's in the way. Um, so we'll start with the downpipe. Um, I'm running a Catalyst downpipe. It's, uh, man, what brand was it? I can't remember what brand it is, but I picked it up from Mario um, you can find him on North American Motoring um, under the username Mario Kart. He's a Manic Tune dealer in California. I highly recommend him. Um, easy to work with. We'll answer any questions you have. Um, we'll guide you through the process of what you should expect. Um, you know, if you have questions as far as, well, can I do this? Uh, what up, or do I have a risk of blowing up? Can I do this or will it blow up? So on so forth. Um, he's pretty knowledgeable and he's super quick to answer emails too. Like it's almost like you might as well be texting with him. Um, so what can I say? The downpipe. Can't remember the brand, um, but I picked it up from him. It was actually used. Uh, he let it go to me for 250. Yeah, 250. Um, stainless steel downpipe, when I picked, uh, well not when I picked it up, but when I got it in the mail, uh, I went ahead and, uh, not powder coated, but I bought some ceramic high temp paint from the store, uh, went ahead and scuffed up the, the outside of the pipe, and then I, uh, coated it with, uh, the black ceramic coating, just to, I don't know, maybe a little more stealthy when people are under my car working on it, uh, and also maybe a little bit of heat protection, but not much. Um, this is where a lot of your power is gonna come from once you get into tuning, um, aside from the tune itself. The intake 
not a whole lot of power, not a whole lot of difference. Um, honestly, I didn't feel any difference in the car when I did the intake. The intercooler, very minor. And the biggest thing with the intercooler, like I said, is the consistency of power, not so much a boost in power. Um, now, with the downpipe, you're gonna feel a lot more power. Your turbo is gonna spool quicker, especially with a Catalyst free-flowing one. Um, your turbo is gonna instantly just kick in and go. Uh, now, the very last modification I'm gonna talk about is tuning. Um, so, the first thing I actually did for this car when I got it, after I got it, um, I sold off a bunch of old parts from my R32, um, some leftover wheels that I had, and I started looking around the forums for the minis and whatnot and what to do, and I found uh, Burger Motorsports, you know, they make the, uh, the JB4 for like uh, Volkswagen, and the newer minis use JB4s and stuff like that, uh, other BMWs. They made a little module called the JB Plus for these cars. And all that is, is it would plug in between your mass airflow sensor harness um, and the mass airflow sensor itself. So it just plugs in there in between them. And basically what it does is it tricks your ECU um, to push more boost pressure. Um, they cost $300. Um, I have nothing against Burger Motorsports. But to be honest with you, I was not fully satisfied uh, with the purchase. Um, it does give you a nice little boost in power. I think I was hitting like 17 or 18 PSI when I got it. Um, but my air fuel ratio was horrible. Um, at wide open throttle, I was getting air fuel ratios as high as like 13.5, um, approaching 14 sometimes, which is dangerous. Uh, that's very lean for wide open throttle, um, you know, 14.5, 14.6, that's usual like cruising AFR. When you're not on it, you're just cruising along um, or idling, you know, stuff like that. So I decided to take it off so I didn't have any engine problems. Um, I traded that in to Mario when I did my Manic Tune. So he gave me a $200 uh, rebate or whatever you want to call it, uh, $200 off the uh, cost of my tune and everything to send him the JB Plus with my ACU. I don't know what he does with them, he probably resells them to get his money back from them or something, I don't know. Uh, but I mean it's really nice that it was a nice easy process to get rid of it and get something out of it still, you know? And I have to go to the hassle of selling it online and haggling with somebody, so on and so forth. Um, so I got $200 back from it. I talked about it in one of my previous videos uh, on the drive along that I did, the vlog. Um, I went with the Manic Stage 2, um, which it will tell you online that it requires a catalyst downpipe or a, a downpipe with a high flow catalytic converter. I think it has to be 200 cell or 100 cell, somewhere around that. Um, which even if you run a 200 cell catted downpipe in this car and you don't have a tune, it's gonna kick a check, uh, check engine light. So since I don't have to go through emissions because I have a Florida plate, even though I'm living in New Jersey right now, um, I have my Florida plate, uh, I don't have to do emissions testing, so I just went with the Catalyst downpipe and I don't plan on getting rid of my Florida registration anytime soon. Uh, so that's the way I'm gonna keep it. So with the tune, this is the process. Basically, your ECU is right here. All it is is a couple little plastic clips. You pull it off. Um, then there's like these little latch levers under there. You unhook those. ECU slides out. The harness pulls out. And that's it. Super easy. You don't have to take off anything in the inside of the car like some cars. It's not buried down in there. It's not under the, you know, the cowling up there for the the uh, windshield wipers and everything, like some Volkswagens are. Um, super easy, um, very painless process. I mean, it took me literally like 30 seconds to take the ECU out. Um, when you do that, you make sure that you unplug your uh, battery so that you don't um, 
hurt your ECU at all. Um, I took it out. I put it and the JB Plus in a $25 overnight envelope from uh, USPS. Set it off on a Thursday. It got to Mario on Friday. He uh, updated me that he had gotten it. Um, did his stuff and got it back to USPS um, on Friday as well. But the ECU got to him a little late. So he wasn't able to get it back to USPS by their cutoff point, which was fine. I wasn't worried about it. Um, but he overnight mails it back to you as well. Um, so the cost for just the Stage 2 tune, um, with the overnight shipping costs included from my end and his end, was $550. Um, great deal. Especially for the power. I mean, uh, I'm making, according to my cell phone hooked up to the OBD2 uh, running the Torque Pro app, um, I've hit as much as 230 horsepower estimate to the wheels and 250 foot pounds of torque, um, which is a huge jump from uh, stock. So along with that, I went ahead and I got the downpipe, like I said. Um, I went with two-step colder spark plugs that he sent me as well. He'll ask you if you want those and you're gonna need them on stage two. Um, maybe even stage one, you'll need at least one step colder because um, the stock spark plugs are just gonna blow out with that much boost. Um, I also got this little guy right here, which is the SPS switch. Now people who have used uh, Revo tuning in Volkswagen might recognize this. It's actually the same exact module, um, I guess Manic, works with Revo for the mini platform. So what this does is it has a dial right here that goes from, um, there's a nine at the very bottom, I don't know why it starts with nine, and there's a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the back, it tells you what they do. So zero is for communications, which I would assume is updates. There's a little ethernet uh, looking port right here. It's not an ethernet port. Um, number two is, or number one is stock, so that's your stock flash, um, which is basically copied from your ECU. Um, there's performance mode A, which is your low boost mode, which they send you a chart, it's actually up over here on my cabinet, it tells you that mode A is for 18 PSI. Uh, performance map B, which is number three, is for 20 PSI. Um, and number four, performance map C is for 21.4 PSI, most aggressive map. That's exactly what it says on the sheet. And I run on map C pretty much the whole time. The only reason that I bought this, and this is an extra $200 on top of your tuning, if you want this. The only reason I bought this was because when I first got my tune, I didn't have my intercooler installed, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy the downpipe yet. Um, but Mario actually sent that to me ahead of time, before I had the money, so that I could enjoy my Stage 2 tune and be happy with the purchase um, without having to worry about the fact that I didn't have enough money. So, you know, plus 100 points for Mario for customer service. He really cares about his customers. Um, so he sent the downpipe. And I wasn't expecting the downpipe. Um, or I might have skipped on this, but I'm still glad I didn't because now... I can put my car back to stock or I can turn my boost down um, whenever I want if I'm going to let somebody borrow my car, which probably never happens. Um, stuff like that, you know, and I can, I have control over which tune um, that I purchase because you get all, all four, you know, stock and the three maps, whether you get the SPS switch or not, they're in there. You just can't access them without this. Um, number five is anti-theft on and number six is anti-theft off. And number nine is for firmware updates. So, all in all, you know, it was 550 for the tune with the shipping. Um, the spark plugs, I think, were an extra $70. Um, and then the intercooler, not the intercooler, the downpipe was 250 So, all in all, you know, it's under a grand to basically go stage two. Um, if you did the tune, so 550 
plus the spark plugs, you're at, what's that, 620. Um, and then say you get a, a, you know, a downpipe for 250, you go from 620, now you're at 870, you know, 870. Then say you buy an intercooler for $135, you're like, what is it, $1,005, basically. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys tuning in and taking your time to uh, watch. I know it was a long one. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the Beamer Dude channel. Um, if you haven't checked him out, you should. He's got a Mini Cooper uh, and a couple BMWs on his channel. He does mods, um, do-it-yourself fixes, all types of stuff. Um, definitely a good channel, uh, good guy. I've talked to him. And uh, like I said, if you haven't checked him out, you totally should. Thanks for tuning in.